Okay, here are the notes for lesson 2.2, polynomial functions of a higher degree. This is going to be a two-part lesson on my own doing. Um, by teaching this class enough now, I noticed that this is a lesson where it is nice to kind of slow down and take our time and really focus on what's going on. Um, because graphing these uh, polynomial functions of higher degree, it, there's a lot of parts that go into it. And so I want to make sure that we're comfortable with all the parts. Um, and you're going to see, uh, I mean, we're familiar with x squared and quadratics and graphing quadratics or maybe graphing our basic cubics, but anything higher than that we don't generally see up until this point. Uh, so we're going to start focusing on some things like n behavior, x intercepts, uh, multiplicity, and what happens between uh, you know x intercepts and zeros of a function. Um, and so I'm going to do some notes here. I'm going to get us into it, uh, but we're only going to do half the lesson here today, and then the other half we'll do uh, for our next lesson. So the first thing are just looking at the graphs of polynomial functions. Uh, they will be continuous with no breaks, holes, or gaps. Um, and you can draw the complete graph without picking up a pencil. So that's nice. Um, there are no uh, sharp turns, only smooth or rounded turns. And so you can see here we have a, a, a continuous function without picking up the pencil. And then here you see the kind of function we're going to have with these um, kind of soft, smooth turns instead of something like you have the absolute value function where it's that sharp corner. Um, so that's just kind of our, you know, introduction to polynomial functions. We're going to start getting some weird waves in there. So here are our kind of uh, uh, methods that are going to help us graph these functions that are greater than 2 or that have a degree greater than 2. So that's x, you know, with the highest degree being cubic or x to the fourth power, x to the fifth power, anything higher. And the methods that we're going to do are going to be plotting our points, finding our intercepts, and using symmetry to help us to just make these reasonable sketches by hand. The power of the function, so monomials of a form x to the n, n is even, um, the graph is similar to x squared. So, you know, if n is 4, 6, 8, 10, it's going to look similar to an x squared. Um, if n is odd, so 3, 6, or so, wow, not 6, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, uh, the graph is going to be similar to a cubic. Um, and so you can see some similarities here even in the pictures. The greater the n value, the flatter the graph is near the origin. So you can see uh, in the gray here is our basic, you know, x squared quadratic function. And then x to the fourth with a higher exponent, we still have the same n behavior going up to the left and up to the right, but we're getting that flatter behavior right around the origin. Same kind of thing for, you know, you have your cubic and your x to the fifth here. You can see in gray, kind of hard to see, that is your cubic, and then it's a little bit flatter for x to the fifth, and it only gets more and more flat the higher the degree. Um, so that kind of helps us to get a picture of what it looks like if we did get something like x to the 11th. Um, so let's take a look at one, some rough sketches here. Um, we have negative x to the fifth. Remember, uh, negative is going to kind of flip our graph about the uh, x-axis. And so that negative up front is going to flip my graph. So generally, I would have, you know, my cubic would look something like this, a basic x cubed function. Well, we are going to flip it about the x-axis. And we're also going to have this fifth power, which is going to make it flatter around the origin. And so a basic sketch, a rough sketch of this could be something like this, where we keep it flat right around the origin. And it's also been flipped about that x-axis. And so something like that could maybe be a rough sketch of negative x to the fifth. And then for x plus 1 to the fourth, uh, that is a uh, horizontal shift to the left one unit. So it's really kind of shifted over a little bit. And then I have uh, that 4. It's that even, so it makes me think, okay, it's going to look um, sort of like a x squared. So it's going to go up to the left, up to the right, but be flatter around that point. And so I'm going to try my best to kind of sketch out what that might look like for us and maybe keep it flat right here and then back up. So that's really rough, um, working on my trackpad there. Um, but just trying to highlight that flattening and also remembering our um, flipping and our moving, you know, our, our transformations to some of these functions still apply even with higher degree. Here we have the leading coefficient uh, is the variable in front of the largest exponent. We've I've talked about leading coefficient before, um, but here is what we're going to call the leading coefficient test. And so if your leading coefficient uh, you can see here if it's positive uh, and your exponent is odd. So some examples there would be like if you had 7, oops, I want to use my pen here, like 7x to the third 
So that's a positive leading coefficient with a, uh, with a cube or um, maybe like a negative 5x cubed. Uh, let's do a different one, like x to the, I don't know, seventh. All right, um, with the odd exponent, and then our leading coefficient test will come into play. So they're talking about when n is odd, so that would be like 3 and 7. Um, if it's positive, you're going to get n behavior uh, that goes down to the left, up to the right. Now, if your um, leading coefficient is negative and your exponent is odd, then you're going to get n behavior that goes up to the left and down to the right. And so that happened already here. We had the leading coefficient being negative, and so our n behavior, so that negative leading coefficient, an odd exponent, we have the n behavior going up to the left, down to the right. If it was a positive leading coefficient with a odd exponent, it would have gone up to the right, down to the left. Here we can see something similar with even, uh, and two examples for even could be um, like a positive, you know, 3x squared versus a negative 4x to the sixth. Um, with the positive, so you see the exponents are both even. With the positive leading coefficient, you get up to the left, up to the right. Uh, with the negative leading coefficient, you get down to the left, down to the right. And so we get to kind of start evaluating our n behavior based on if the highest exponent is odd or even, and then if the leading coefficient is uh, positive or negative. So here we can start describing some of this n behavior, and I see that I have my highest exponent is a cubic, and I have a negative um, leading coefficient. And so uh, that would tell me that I am going to go up to the left and down to the right, very similar to what I saw here with a negative leading coefficient and an odd exponent. So I get that up to the left and down to the right. Um, down to the right. I'll stop writing that out because you can see it. It takes a little too much time, okay? Here I have a positive leading coefficient, positive one, and an even exponent, and so that would be up to the left, up to the right. And then here in C, I have a positive leading coefficient and a odd exponent that would be up to the right, down to the left, okay? So you can see with even functions, you get either both up or both down. With odd functions, with the odd exponent leading co uh, odd ex highest degree exponent, geez, stumbled my way through that, um, you get kind of the mix of either left or up or down, geez. So here, another big thing of these is polynomial functions of degree n, so higher degree. They're going to have at least uh, n real zeros. So if I give you the highest degree is x to the fifth power, it's going to have at most five x intercepts or at most five real zeros. And it's going to have uh, n minus one turning points. Um, and a turning point would just be like right there. That's two turning points. It would go, you know, it turns once, it turns twice. So it has at most five real zeros or five x intercepts, and it has at most, in the case of the x equals five, four turning points. Um, and that's big for us. Turning points equals, you know, max or minimum points where the graph changes from increasing to decreasing or vice versa. Uh, the real zeros of a function, important to pay attention here. Uh, if x equals a is a zero of the function, x equals a is a solution, x minus a is a factor, and a uh, a comma zero is an x intercept. Um, and that's something that we kind of know for real zeros. It's just talking about um, values that make your, you know, function zero, um, or, you know, what value is your x coordinate for your x intercept. Zeros, again, is just another fancy way of saying x intercepts. Repeated zeros, and so another big thing here, uh, especially because we talk about multiplicity in this section, uh, polynomial functions can change signs only added zeros. And so it can, it's, uh, you know, to the left of a zero, it's going to be all negative, or to the right of a zero, it's going to be all positive. So we can see between two consecutive zeros, a polynomial must be entirely positive or entirely negative. Uh, so the only places it can change signs are at those zeros. Um, and we'll talk about this multiplicity in a second, but let's see what they kind of mean here. If you were to graph a function, something that maybe looks like this, what they're talking about is you can see at this zero, to the left of this zero, it's all negative. 
And you can see between this zero and this zero, it's all positive. And so what they're saying is you cannot mix positive and negative between zeros. It's either all positive between the zeros or in the case you can look down here, it's all negative between the zeros. Okay, and that idea is gonna help us if we can figure out our zeros and we can figure out, okay, is it gonna be positive numbers between our zeros or negative, we can start getting a better picture of our graph. So what they're talking about here then too is this concept of multiplicity, okay? So it says a factor x minus a raised to the k yields as a repeated zero x equals a of mul multiplicity k. And the big thing there is talking about this multiplicity k. And it's saying if k is odd, then the graph is going to cross the x-axis at that zero x equals a. If k is even, if you have an even multiplicity, then it's just going to touch the x-axis at that zero and not actually cross it. So let's take a look at an example, and this may be the last example I do here uh, before the end of just part one, and then, like I said, we'll talk more about part two uh, in you know our next lesson. And so here what we have is we're going to determine the multiplicity of the zeros. Um, so what we need to do is we need to factor this in... Uh, get the zeros of the function. So I'm going to look at my function, negative 2x to the fourth plus 2x squared, and I'm going to try to factor this to get my zeros. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull out a negative 2x squared, and then I'm going to be left with uh, x squared plus 1. That equals zero. So now I have two factors um, that I do not believe... Oh, I pulled out a negative 2 here, so this is x squared minus 1 here, isn't it? It is. And so uh, what this then can be factored a little bit more, this is negative 2x squared, uh, x minus 1, x plus 1, as my completely factored, um, completely factored function there. Now you can see here... This function, so going back to multiplicity, we have x minus a raised to the k. Well, since this is degree 2, that is an even multiplicity. You have your x minus a here. That's degree 1, so that's got an odd multiplicity. This is also degree 1, and so it's got odd multiplicity as well. So if I go and I find my zeros by setting each of these equal to 0, I have 2x squared equals 0. I have x minus 1 equals 0, and I have x plus 1 equaling 0. Here, I get that x, um, x just equals 0, so that's one of my zeros of the function. I get x equaling 1, and I get x equaling negative 1. Well, because uh, the multiplicity of this portion of it, of this portion of your factored statement, has a, a multiplicity of 2, at that point, x equals 0, it's just going to touch your graph. Because the multiplicity of these factors is 1, then it's going to cross at this point of your graph. And you can see that in the function here. So let's break down the function as much as we can. And like I said, this will be the last portion of this lesson that we're going to do. So you can see the leading coefficient is negative and the highest exponent is 4. That tells me the end behavior is going to go down to the left and down to the right. Okay, according to my zeros of the function, at x equals 0, it's just going to touch the graph. At x equals 1, it's going to cross. And at x equals negative 1, it's also going to cross. Looking at the graph right here, you can see the end behavior is going down to the left and down to the right. You can see at the point x equals negative 1 that our function crosses the x-axis. You can see that at x equals 0, we just have that touching the x-axis. And then at x equals positive 1, it is again crossing the x-axis. Um, our highest degree is 4, so we have at most four zeros. Well, we have three zeros, so it works. And then we have uh, four minus one turning points, so we have at most three turning points, which we do see here. We see a turning point right here, we see a turning point right here, and then we see another one right there. So it's meeting all of the things that we talked about before we get to this point. Um, I'm going to cover the rest of this lesson in a part two video. Um, or in a part two lesson, we're just going to focus on trying to understand some of these big concepts um, before we start evaluating more problems like this.